Yeah, this is, um, I've never been to Pennsylvania. This is a beautiful area, very, um, I guess you call it mountainous area, uh, a mountainous region of, of Pennsylvania. And we're kind of up on this big plateau and um, it's just beautiful hardwoods um, with some open uh, ag fields around um, up top and then a lot of creek bottoms and thick nasty stuff down the bottom. It's just a beautiful place to hunt whitetails. Funny story, it wasn't what I was looking for at first because I wanted to be in Iowa. You know, <laughs> it was like my dream. Like I think every whitetail hunter is like got to get to Iowa. Um, and so when I first came here, it was not supposed to be permanent. Like this was going to be uh, till our kids get a little older thing because their family's close. But then the more I was here and the kids have their cousins and friends and I just realized that I didn't, probably was never going to just uproot them from that and take them to Iowa. So Samantha and I decided to start looking for a farm here and we knew we wanted like a big enough area where we felt like we could make an impact. A guy I know had gave me a number to a guy that owned a ton of ground around here. And so I finally just got up the courage and just sent him a text. You don't know me from Adam, but I want to buy a big farm for my family and uh, something my boys can enjoy. And if you ever want to sell one, I'd love to look at it. And he's like, when can you get here? It was just crazy how it worked, you know, thinking back. And I rode around with him all day looking at his properties. And he said, you pick the one you want, I'll sell it to you. And it was just like surreal. When I walked off over and seen the big trout stream in the bottom, I called Samantha and I said, this is it, you know, and then took her out there and she fell in love with it. And kind of how we ended up at that place. Super special to us now. And it's not Iowa for whitetails, but it's the best you could possibly have, in my opinion, in Southwest Pennsylvania. I think the October roll is there is a, you know, a part of October that's really tough, um, but there's also that first cold front when the conditions are right in mid-October every year. I think it's the best three or four days of the year, in my opinion. It is the morning of October 19th. We did another hanging out. We brought the saddles in on the edge of our sanctuary. It's just a giant green bottom here, it's just gnarly, kind of glimpy, and it's where the buck I call Browns lives, he spends his whole life in there pretty much. Morning hunting this like early in October is not, not what, I mean, it's not what I do. I mean, it's just like a big no-no normally, and like, but I grew up that way, like we hunted opening morning every year, like morning, evening, growing up, but the more you hunt it, the more you realize you do more harm than good this time of year, most of the time. Going in in the mornings, you blow them out and ruin the evening hunt. And so it was like, it was the first one that I hunted all year. Um, but I also knew conditions were just perfect. Like that first cold front in October um, and a lot of, and it's a full moon. And my pictures were showing a lot of movement like morning, more than afternoon really. Not getting any daylight coming up on the phone plots or anything. So we're kind of in a transition area. It's a big, thick bedding area over there. One behind me, I'm just hoping to catch him coming down this ridge, maybe going back to bed or just seeing him, kind of get an idea of what he's doing. But I just can't put the pieces of the puzzle together to figure him out yet. I'm not going to be here in the rut. I normally wouldn't be hunting mornings right now at all, but I'm not going to be here after October 27. And with this cool weather, I felt like we had to be in here and give it a shot. So.
Yes. Holy crap, we just killed a freaking giant, dude. Holy crap, we just killed a giant. Oh, that's a, that's a freaking giant, dude. Oh my god, I just smoked him, dude. I do not believe it. That's the first time I've ever laid my eyes on that deer in my life. What just happened, bro? It just went down. Oh my god. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Sitting in the saddle and looked down at my phone and uh, I was like, oh, he shot his target buck. He shot this big old deer and and uh, he wasn't expecting to, to shoot him at all. I, I think he was just hoping to maybe get eyes on him and see what he was doing. And I think he's put so much time and effort here on this farm. I think this is the fifth season they've owned it. And he said they didn't kill a deer, kill a buck off this place for the first three years they owned it. I would have never been hunting mornings right now, ever. It's like the biggest no-no in the world. I felt dirty walking in here this morning. Freaking wind in my back. But I was like, I'm gonna just go. Yeah, it was a weird feeling, man. Like, um, when I go places and kill big deer, it's like excitement and like, just a really cool adrenaline rush, you know, of, of hunting and that intimate encounter. But that was totally different because I, I knew that deer. Like, I had, you know, just thought about him so much. And like, it's a funny thing. You hope he lives and hope he lives and hope he lives. And then in, that kill is so final. It's almost a sad moment, you know, it's like, a very accomplished feeling I wouldn't have changed anything for the world, but it's it's so final, it's like, I, I don't get to chase him anymore. Levi. How did I not see that, dude? We walked all over. Absolute God. Absolute giant. I've lost so much sleep over this deer. Biggest deer I've ever got a picture of in Pennsylvania. What an enormous body. It was a kind of a surreal moment. Excitement for sure, um, but like almost speechless. Like just the story kind of over with brows now but what's cool was his son was under us five minutes before that you know so there'll be another story and uh, that's like I think best case scenario these deer don't live forever he'll be honored and, and that memory will be cherished in our household forever so I'd be lying to you if I said I wasn't coming in here a little bit in intimidated. I mean, you're hunting with one of the best archers and best hunters in the world. Up uh, in a box blind tonight on a food plot they call the rock field. And uh, there's been a couple of different bucks in here uh, that have been right on the edge of daylight um, at a scraped tree out in the, in the food plot here. So. We're just in a beautiful spot here. We got a great view. Um, should be able to see deer coming.
our target bucks come up to the food plot and uh, hit a scrape just on the edge of that plot. And uh, he was chasing around some of the ladies in that food plot and, and he was just coming into uh, a range where I felt comfortable and I was about ready to stop him and, and, and pull back. And he let out a grunt and just chased a couple of does right out of the food plot up over the hill and down towards the road. And, and, and uh, we, thought, we thought the night was done. You know, we maybe had 10, 15 minutes of shooting light left. And, um, you know, lo and behold, about 30 seconds later, I just see antlers just bounding up over the grass. Deer they call Stubby, oldest oldest deer on the farm, um, comes into the food plot, and he just comes right towards us. We had some does over to our right, and he just walked right through at 35 yards, and he stopped on his own. I didn't have to stop him, and you know, placed an arrow, and we double lunged him, and, and perfect shot, and he was down within 50 yards. Great job, appreciate it. Yeah, I can't thank you enough for having us out. Oh no, I'm fine. Oldest deer on the farm. <laughs> Legit. Yeah, I still can't believe it. Just, <laughs> I, I can't. I haven't had words since I shot. Really? Yes. That's awesome. I'm, I'm so pumped. Dang, October low, not too bad. No, no, it's good. <laughs> You know, having a guy of Levi's caliber on our team really goes a long way. The guy's just a, an absolute professional. Um, he's humble, he's, he's knowledgeable, he's one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet. Been able to accomplish a lot, but not been holding the candle to being a dad. I know that time's very limited, so I want to make the most of it. I love it all. I love shooting, hunting, fishing. I love being outside. I have since I was a little kid, and I just want people to be like, He's a good guy and, and uh, decent at what he does, I guess. You know, there's no, like, I could care less if I have my name plastered anywhere. And, and you know, when I was younger, in my teens, and, and um, I want to be the best that ever lived. That was my goal, you know. I want to win more world championships. I want to I want to have my TV show. I want to be the best that ever walked the planet. You know, and the older I get, it's like, eh, it's not that cool. You know, I just, I want to be a good dad. Um, I want to leave an impact on people that way. Um, just by being a good guy and, and knowing they can count on me. And if I kill big deer and win more world championships, great, but God's allowed me to accomplish so much that, you know, if I never do it again, it's be totally fine. <laughs>